Well, I would push you back and then go. Oh. I feel like I'm about to do an ice bath. My first 10 interventions I did, I was terrible. Wow. So you gave them their money back. Hello everybody, Tony Horton here. I've just had my peak replenished, which means it is now officially time to power up. Now, if you've been following me, you know all about the power of four and the four pillars that you need to help you achieve and sustain lasting results. There's your nutrition, of course, food, very important, fitness, hello, supplementation, hello, power life, and of course, mindfulness. Now, my guest today is a renowned life development coach who is in high demand by many of the biggest celebrities around the world. He's a two-time New York Times best-selling author, a highly sought-after public speaker, and founder of Cast Treatment Center. And he's also a gentle, jacked giant. Please, everybody, welcome Coach Mike Mayer. Right. Here he comes. Hi, what's so, wow, what's it like up there? Well, you're about to find out. I know, I know. You're gonna put me through some jujitsu today. We're gonna do it. I'm fired up. Yeah. I'm not so good at that. I like working on my weaknesses, so this is gonna be great, man. Yeah, you know, and the, and the great thing is you'll know how to protect yourself against someone who is much bigger than you. What, like running away. Yeah, running We're gonna, away. You're gonna teach me running Let away? Let me tell you, I'm a big guy, but before this, I just would've scratched you. <laughs> I would've just kind of clawed you. I don't know what to do. Yeah, that's my technique. <laughs> Scratch and run. You know, we're always looking, you talk about this. I've listened to a lot of podcasts that you're on and your message throughout the years is get really comfortable in the discomfort yeah, and yeah. pushing ourselves. Right, right. So this was just one of those things that yeah. mobility. Important. Flexibility. Important. Self-defense. Hello. Yeah. Gotta yeah. do it. But your height, I just imagine people go, I'm good. Yeah. yeah, you know, I compete too. Uh, I'm only a blue belt. I have two mm. stripes, so I'm, I've only been doing it for three years, but uh, there's a lot of guys bigger than me. Oh, wow. Yeah. Yeah, that must be fun. Check it out, it's gonna be fun. Hey everybody, Tony Horton here, and I'm wearing a gi. That's right, this is what you wear when you do jujitsu, and I'm here with Coach Mike, and he's gonna take me through the, hmm, I don't know what. I'm a little nervous, but I'm excited as well, because uh, this is outside of my comfort zone, right? And so how do you get better at well, stuff? Unless you don't get outside. Listen, first, let me say, yeah. I consider myself a beginner. I've only been doing it two and a half years. Yeah. I go to a gym, uh, Cobrinha, so you're wearing a gi, that's Alliance Cobrinha. Uh, all the gyms, all the fight gyms have different professors and, and different groups that they fight for. Mm -hmm. I started doing jiu-jitsu at 40. You can do it in a gi or no gi. Okay, uh, so naked. Basically just workout clothes. Okay, okay, yeah. all right. Okay. And, uh, What's great about jiu-jitsu is it's great for mobility, breathing, mm -hmm. and also if I knew no jiu-jitsu and you took it only for 90 days and we were to somehow get in a fight or a conflict, just by you knowing it for 90 days and me not knowing jiu-jitsu because all fights go to the ground, mm -hmm. you'd end up kicking my ass. Is that right? That's right. Wow. Yeah. So now I'm officially very interested. For sure. So I'm gonna teach you what happens uh, when you end up on the ground. Okay. Because most fights end up on the ground yeah. and jiu-jitsu is about protecting yourself, not hurting anyone else. Right. Uh, I figured what I could do is teach you something if, in case I ended up on top of you. Oh, what do you weigh? I weigh 260 pounds. Okay. And what do you weigh? I weigh 160 pounds. Got it. I weigh, well, I weigh 170, but I just wanted to say that because Sounded like I'm also 265, so it's all. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. It's still balanced out. I'm really 171. I don't know. Enough of the weight. So, so what I want to show you is if you were to end up on top. So I'll first do it, okay? Okay. If you were on top of me, inside my guard, I would say. All right. So this is Not called. Here. You'd be on your knees, right? Right. 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 So you'd be you'd be in what's called my close guard. So your knees would be down. Okay. So a lot of jujitsu is action and reaction. So let me first go here, right? Right. right. And then you're gonna what? Maybe do that, oh, but still okay. go here, okay. right? <laughs> right? So my goal is to either submit you mm -hmm. or what's called the sweep. So mm. what happens is, if I were to go like this. Yeah. Oh, yep. Oops, that happened fast. Happened quickly, and I went pretty slowly. Yeah. And then again, I'm here again. Right. Right? Mm -hmm. So, I'm gonna show you a little bit of what to do. I'm already injured. If I end up on top of you. What you do is you're gonna put your legs around me and what's called a photo shot. So, I'm here. gonna, no. Up here. Up here. Yeah. And cross. 
And notice a lot of body cross around. Notice how you can move me around yeah, a little bit. just using your hips. Yeah. Right? So I'll show you the cross jump, which I did for you. Right. Tell me if I got this, all right? Mm. So I'm here. Yes. Across. And he comes in. Flip you around. Yeah. And then bang. Oh, okay. Here you go. Yeah, and if you put your head down with it, yeah. put your head down while you're doing it, yeah. oh, you're doing all the pressure. All right. Oh, yeah, a little extra. There you go. Nice. That's it. Ta-da. What else you got? Well, <laughs> I mean, there's that, what do you want to learn? Every fight I got in here, stand up for uh -huh. a second, right? It, it seems like, and I've gotten in like five, mm -hmm. and I haven't gotten one in 20 years, but it always seems like people, uh, like your opponent, Right, it's always going for the grab. Mm. This, this move. Yeah. All right. And so, if I have you here, mm. so what's your first thing? You if you were here, yeah. Well, I would push you back, and then oh, bring it, and then I'm probably grab <laughs> That was easy. Yeah. Yeah. Great. Just using your uh, your own um, pressure and force to just move you around. Wow. Yeah. So there's not much energy on my end. Now, here's another one. Uh -huh. Years ago, I used to play a lot of hoop with uh -huh. a bunch of, like, some pretty rough crowd. And whatever, I was a wise guy and I said something. And I went at him and I got a, I got a kick right in my chest. He went mm. weird up and was like, wham! Wow. He just took me. I don't want to do that because this is, this is hard. So yeah. But like, let's say, for example, if we're here mm. and the first one comes in like that, mm. like that, like, let's say just a bang. And then, okay, we'll get the rest. All right, I get this. Yeah, that's if we had a, we had a decent map, we play more. Though. Yeah, I mean, the goal is if you're going to swing at me, the goal is not to fight, right? Right. Not get in any fights at all and kind of defuse. And, right. And jujitsu does a great job at diffusing. Right. Even you trying to punch me. It's in not the face. mixed martial arts by any means. Correct. But with jujitsu, it's really you're constantly learning, evolving, getting better, training, whereas. Karate, you know, you're kind of just kicking kind of, bags or, yeah, or learning yeah. different stuff. But well, what I like, about, tell me if I'm right or wrong, but there's components in, the, there's wrestling in this, obviously. There is. And there's also the, the flexibility, mobility aspect. In your yoga, you have a regular yoga practice that helps improve your body's ability to do this. Yeah. Yeah. And even, you know, I competed, I just competed two weeks ago in Orlando, and uh, it's, single elimination, so you lose the first round, you're out, and everyone flies in, and they're all my size or bigger, and the first two opponents I had were much bigger than me. Much on. stronger, bigger, so I really, you know, I had to use my technique, and- uh, How'd that go? I mean, I I won my first two, nice. and then I got choked out on my third one, which was nice, I'd never been choked out in a tournament. I kind of liked it, in <laughs> hindsight. Just because I had, you know, like, like, Again, it's getting yeah, comfortable like, with discomfort. It's humility. Right, right, right. You know, at 43 years old, being in a position where someone else is forcing me to submit does a lot for my humility, yeah. my ego. Which is part of your growth. But how do you prep for it? I mean, I know you do yoga uh, and whatnot. Like, you know, the mobility thing, it's got to be cute. Yeah, you know, one drill I do that's mm -hmm. been really helpful mm -hmm. is um, doing this and going one, two, three, down one, nice. two, yeah. three, and then holding this posture. Right. You know, you're trying, you trying to get as low as possible. Trying to get as low as possible. When I started, I was like this. Oh, going, ah, ah, oh yeah, horrible, horrible. Yeah. Now, you know, I can drop down. Right. And it's just from this is super helpful with getting really the hips. So I'm custom, I'm custom made for getting ready. You are it's custom made. Where I, am I know, that's incredible. This is how I do lunch. I'm like down here like this. The drill I just started doing actually yesterday. Oh, let me see. So yesterday yeah. I started this, and I'm not too good at it, so. All right. This is a hot mess express, <laughs> Coach Mike, 1.3, not a 2.0. All right. So um, a lot of what you want to do overall with movement and jujitsu mm -hmm. is be able to do what's called inverted. So this is the drill I just started doing, which Oh, right. Right? Yeah, great. And I go in slowly. And then... Uh, yeah. So you're still kind of a weak sister with it. But, you know, it's like... That's pretty good. How to, how to get into that flow. 266.5. I started last night at the gym. I actually went 
just to do this. This is about the worst floor possible for that stuff, too. You and that's why we're growing. Yeah, yeah okay. Woo, we don't See care. what you did there? I saw All what right. you did there. So, like, what I'm trying to do... Like, right, that's like plow and yoga, right? So that's... Oh, yeah. that's called pain. But that's what I want to so get for good me, at. For me, so for me, let's see here. Yeah. That's relatively easy to get that. Can you go all the way down? Oh, that's great. Yeah, I think yeah. it's a practice. So I want to get to the point where I can do this for five minutes straight. That's my goal. Oh, dang. Right? All right. Now, right now, it's for about 10 seconds. <laughs> but you got to start somewhere. Yeah, hey, man. So. Not a problem. And then going back going slow. Back. I went a little fast. You were trying to do both sides, I'm assuming, yeah? Yeah. There it is. And tuck the head. Part of the challenge is being able to go slowly back. And I need to work on that. Right. Control it. Uh, yeah, I ended up over here. Yeah. Yeah, nice. Well, let's see you do it. Come on, baby! That's kind of it, right? Yeah. yeah. It's like a cousin. <laughs> it's, like a distant, it's like a distant cousin. Now on this side, over here. Right. Wait. There we go. Yes, I love doing it on cement too. That's the best part. Yeah, this is, this is not the ideal floor at all. Not the ideal floor at all. Very hard, but you know, good job. It toughens you up a little bit. Yeah. You know what I mean, yeah, a couple of pumps and bruises. Nice. Thanks, man. Thanks, man. Hey, guess what? Next, I'm gonna put Mike through some of my stuff. I think he's gonna enjoy that immensely. So, check that out. You're on the road a lot, right? Do you travel a lot? I do, yeah. And sometimes, I don't know, like with me, if it's pouring rain outside or it's snowing and I, in the gym is crowded or all the equipment's rusty, I, you know, I usually just try to find stuff in my room. I try to travel with a mat if I can. Mm. So you, here's a, here's my first move. Okay. I'm gonna show it to you and I might struggle, but we'll see how it goes. Now, we, I have a 15 pounder and you have a 20. I have a 20. Right? So I'll, I'll go come up and then it's your turn. Okay. All right. So I have my weight here. All right, now that ankle mobility is kind of an important thing mm. here, which you, you know, you're down on the ground a lot. So I'm here, right? Mm. I'm gonna roll. I'm gonna use that weight, come up. Oof. Yeah. Mm. Right. I will observe. Mm. Okay. All right. It's the fall for me. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So you wanna, you wanna get down and you wanna keep your back nice okay. and round and then bring your like knees that. up to your chest. Boom. And then roll. Quick, throw that weight out. Yeah, yeah, and that's how it goes the first time. Yeah. That's not bad, right? Yeah. You wanna try it again? I wanna try it again. I would take that weight and throw it out this way. Yeah. Week. Yeah, you know what I mean? All right. But you're working on you're working on your core, mobility, down. Right away, go quick. Oh, I still got the hop. It's like gymnastics, how yeah. to get penalized. Yeah. <laughs> you know, the Russian judge gave you a six. <laughs> it took me several tries to get this thing. Okay. Right? Like, if I have shoes on, I can't even do it. I need the bare feet. Here, I'll do one more. Watch me. Ready? Yeah. Let's hope for the best. Down. And here. Up. That was good. Yeah. That was, was good. smooth. That was my best one. That was your best yeah, one. Yeah, while we were filming it. Yeah. All right. Now I'm going to spot you. You ready? Come on up. Yeah, I, was, I grabbed the weight. Try to get him to grab the weight. All right. So and try hop. not to hop, right? Try not to hop. So what you're gonna do is I'm gonna reach for me and I'm gonna grab. You're gonna pull me up. You're gonna, gonna help. Just take, that, take a little bit off. Right? You can here and then up. Hand it to me. All right. Try it again. Come on. There we go. That was 92% you. That's See, good. That's what I, as a trainer, because that's yeah. what I do. People say, I can't do that, I can't do that. I go, well, let me help you at least feel it. Yeah. Right, so you felt it without the hop. Right. And then with practice, maybe you need a heavier weight. I don't know, because you're, you know, you're, you're tall and you're, you're 260, so that heavier weight might, but, but sometimes you get too much weight and it can become a problem. Yeah. It's just a simple, cool thing that works on everything. It's a great compound. Yeah, you really feel it through here, too. Through your hips, yeah. get opened up, right? Yeah, yeah. Round out the back, your core, you need your core to come up. Yeah. So that's move number one. All right. Here's move number two, which is I'm going to go down, I'm going to roll. As I come up, I'm going to cross my legs, throw my hands to the mat, and jump back into Chaturanga or the bottom of the push up. Right? So again, from here, back, cross. There it is. Mmm. 65. Mmm. Mm. Right? Aging's for people who don't want to put the time and effort into slowing it down. So try that one. 
Cross those legs, hands down. Oh, not a problem. Show me another one, because that was so pretty. Oh, is it pretty? Yeah. Oh, okay. I mean, I can't make that any better. All right. Good, cross them, hands. Yeah, nice. Yeah. That was cute. <laughs> That was a cute one. Wasn't it? No. Yeah. yeah. I'm nice. surprised I could do it. Really? Yeah. Well, I look good. Thanks, man. I mean, it's just it's so, it's so crazy how like I watched you do it and I literally thought in my mind, I'm like, ah, the cross leg to the chaturanga. And then what you do is you just switch the cross. Right. To check, you know, that way you're working on that hip mobility. Yeah, that's great. So when I'm on the road, I don't have a dumbbell sometimes, I'll do like the first move. Uh, will be like 10 of those. Mm. Boom, boom, boom. And I, I'll break into a sweat after. No, I'm feeling it already. A little bit. Yeah, right? a little bit. Heart yeah. increase. Hey, everybody. Hey, we're back with Mike. And uh, yes, sir. We're going to do some stuff on one of my mm. favorite apparatus. That's the pull-up bar. And a lot of people, they do pull-ups and they do chin-ups. And those are great. But I like to kind of turn it on its head a little bit and try mm. some different stuff. So there's a simple first move. It's kind of a, it can be plyometric if it wants to be. Meaning, you do a pull-up, you let go and then you grab the center and you do a pull up and you let go. But on this one, you can even, you can slide them in and out, mm. which is how you start. So let me show you, I'll do a couple slidey versions and a couple of ply versions. All right. So I'm up here, right? So I'm gonna do a wide pull up, slide to the center, slide wide. All right, and then of course you can do the actually let go and re-grab. Yeah. I'm not going to tear my bicep. No, 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 no. Uh, here, do a couple of these for me. Right. Like that. Stick that way up. Yeah, stretch. Point that to the sky. Release the pinky. Like that. I'm oh, sorry, pinky. Yeah. I'm getting released. And pull, and pull that pinky in if you can. Uh, oh, good. Oh, good. Uh, and then this side. Right? Release that pinky there. Do you see injuries from this type of stuff? From this? Uh, bumps and bruises. Mostly. Oh, okay. And a lot of flappers, like, you know, your finger, your palms will kind of right. bleed. But, you know, knock on wood, I don't know where it is. Even metal. Not yeah, metal. knock on metal. Uh, I, ha I haven't. Okay. I I've torn my bicep doing other things, and I've shattered my kneecap doing other things, and I've almost compound my tip fib from other things, but not from these. Not from these. Yeah. All right. So, yeah. So try a couple of those. All right. Dun, dun, dun. Dun, dun, dun. And now, yeah, good, now, good. At the top, separate. Right when, you, right when you get to the top, do it at the same time. <sighs> and again. Ah, yeah, that's toasty. And your bicep's still intact. They're toasty, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Now you wanna oh. try that, we're gonna try the crunchy lever. Oh boy. The crunchy lever. Now I like this move because it's just a little bit different. Yeah. You lose it, you're going to use other parts of your body. Mm. Because right. typically when you the go crunchy pull, parts. Yeah, they're going to resist this part right in here, <laughs> right in here, man. So here's your crunchy lever, and I'm up. So I'm going to bring my, my ankles up to the bar, pull my knees oh into my, my shoulders, God. and then I'm going to just stay in that ball. So I'm in the ball, right? My arms are straight here. I can hang out here all day. This is the easy part. The hard part is keeping your lower half kind of where it is as you come into the pull up here, right? Because this is harder than that. This is just sort of a simple way to rest. Boom. There is no way I can hang <laughs> upside down, you think? Come on, baby, now. Yes. I've never hung upside down. Hold on tight. Ever. Hold on. I gotta hold on so tight. So tight. Oh, You'll man. be fine. This okay. is cool. By the way. I feel like I'm about to do an ice bath. <laughs> You know what I mean? That's how I feel right You know, like that feeling but, you get like before? But, yes. 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 All right, but I'm not going to be able to fly into the pull-up. No, no, no. We're just going for the crunch. You're crunchiness. not actually doing a pull-up. We're just all, doing all a crunch. All you're going to do, you're going to hang, uh -huh. and you're going to bring your ankles oh to the bar. God. Why does this feel scary? Because it's like it did when I was with you over there on the floor. Okay, okay. Same right. sensation. I like it that the roles have switched here. This is kind of fun. For yeah, you. it's almost like I feel like my grip doesn't even hold me. All right. Yeah, I think it'll be good. Come you're gonna, on, you're gonna, come again, on. you surprise yourself on the floor work and you're gonna do it here. All right. Pull your knees into your chest and put this part of your ankle. Do, do you wrap your... So I do this, which is like more, this. more sketchy. Then I'm, I'm comfortable. Yeah, this you're gonna feel, you're gonna get a better grip. This is more sketchy, but I'm used to it. That feels better. Yeah. Gotcha. You just put your knees, yeah. There, you're right there. Yeah, pull your ankles there, right there. Good. And then I'll bring your chin to the bar and come down. And go back up. Right there. Yeah. 
Yeah. Now pull your chin to the bar, bend your elbow. Yeah, oh, yeah, I'm doing the ballet move. Yeah, but that was fancy. Right. That was fancy. But you, your confidence. <laughs> no, it's good. Right? My confidence. Yeah, yeah. I didn't think yeah. I could do that. Did you surprise yourself? Yeah. Yeah. Great. I did. Nice. Now you go from the crunchy lever, which is, which teaches you a regular lever, which took me four months to do one of what I'm about to show you. Mm. Let me show you this thing right here. All right. Because this is like this feels like this a little bit. Like, where do I keep my body and my hips or what do I do? Mm. So the idea here is to lock up everything from your armpits down your toenails. So I'm not allowed to bend this or this, okay. no matter where I am the entire time, all right? So on a regular pull up, right? Here's the bottom, all you gotta do is hold on. Getting to the top is the hard part. Mm. So I'm gonna go from the hard part to harder, all right? So my body's gonna be here and then my body's gonna be that back and forth. I'll do like eight. Getting into it looks kind of cool too, like you're defying gravity. Looks like this. So here, let's do mm. three, four. Right. Let's do one. More. There you go. Nice. Thanks, man. Because when I first got into the fitness world, I go to the gym and I do chest mm. for two hours, banging out the dumbbells and the weights and putting on the plates. And I started ruining my shoulders because my ego was too involved. Mm. And I would go to the squat rack and stack them up, stay on the two by four. Right? And a lot yeah. of young kids are still doing that. But this is. This is the human body and what it could do and all the skills like we like you showed me and like I'm showing you. Yeah. Yeah, no, it definitely creates a, a, a well roundedness in your fitness. Well, and also it's kind of cool because you, uh, what you're talking about is just like hitting dumbbells and weights. It gets a it's boring yeah. to me yeah. after yeah. a while. I, I still do it. Thing. Yeah, yeah, but for I, sure. It's not, the, it's not, not a priority. But at least with this stuff, you can see progress besides right. five more pounds. Right. You can like actually, you know, right. start to, to, to feel like, wow, my whole body's getting strong. Whole body, exactly. Right. Whole body. Love it. One more crunchy lever. Okay. Come on. Crunchy lever. All right, so, so crunchy okay. lever in two. So you, once you're in the ball, you stay yeah. in the ball. Stay in the ball. Stay in the ball. Hang out in the ball. Yeah. So like a bat. Like a bat. Like a bat and a ball, which is baseball. All right. So bring the ankles up there. Why do I feel like I'm running into the ocean? <laughs> <laughs> so I love what's going on up here. Though. Oh man, it's, it's a cuckoo's nest. I'm, 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 I'm fired up. You're doing. So you're in the ball. Yeah, yeah. You can bring your knees closer. Great. Right down there, and just go up and stay in this ball. Go up and back. Yeah, don't, don't. Yeah, yeah. Just do a pull up. Ready? One, two, three. Do a pull up. Don't try. And here. Yeah. I got gotcha. you. Yeah. yeah. That's good, man. Yeah. Something to work on. Something to work on. Yeah. Like with me. Exactly. Yeah, thanks, man. Here you go. Appreciate it. Coach Mike, everybody. Nice job. Give me one of these. Give me one of these. Mmm. Mm. Mm. Double. That was fun. That was great. That was fun. What I observed, based on what we both went through there, uh, way outside of my comfort zone, and so were you. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. And that's what life should be. Yeah. Right? I mean, in general, I mean, I don't like to get, I'm not going to, I'm not going to jump off a cliff in a squirrel suit anytime soon. But. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but get uncomfortable, right? Get uncomfortable. Get uncomfortable. Yeah, yeah. Get dirty. Yeah. I love that stuff. And I've shied away from it maybe because I don't know why. I just have. And, and now I love the fact that you said if I was in a scuffle, right, and I had three months of, of jujitsu under my belt, that I'd be way ahead of anybody who had no mm. idea. Because most folks are just, you know, they've got three or four beers in them and they get, it, they get kind of a get in the mood. Yeah, man or woman, if you're a woman too. Yeah. The guy's coming at you and you know jujitsu, yeah. I mean, trouble. Yeah, um, I'm looking forward, we're gonna exchange where you take it, I might come in. Yeah, come to your dojo. Nah, I'd love it. Love that, love that. Yeah, he would love to have yeah. you. Yeah, so you've had a very interesting life, mm. right? Up to this point, you're still a youngster, I'm twice your age. As a life coach, um, how did you end up doing that? How do you well, end up choosing that career? I avoided that title by all means. Oh, really? Most what, what of should, my career. What should I call it? Well, I tried everything. I used to be an alcohol and drug abuse counselor. Mm -hmm. I did. I was an interventionist for many years. Then I called myself an advisor, a consultant. I just really didn't want to be called a life coach. It's probably somewhere in the training world. You know, mm -hmm. like mm -hmm. they, 
um, some of these gyms will call someone a master trainer, right? right. And it's like, oh, I'm a, I'm a higher level of a trainer. Right. But I, I kind of avoid the term life coach. But I, I, I've helped people everything from coming off drugs and severe, really severe depression to helping people make a lot of money. So I kind of have helped people in all aspects of life. And hmm. uh, my art is freeing people to be their best selves. That's really and what is your background though? How, what got you there? Uh, grew up in a very dysfunctional family. Oh, you uh, don't. Well, welcome yeah, to, yeah, yeah. You don't yeah. end up in Who the. Who doesn't? Yeah. I mean, is there a normal thing going well, on? Well, I've come to realize there are some. And people but, just get in their own way anyway. Sometimes. Yeah, yeah. You know, and and I think for me, I had a difficult time coping and emotions, mm. and at least in the profession I'm in, everyone who ends up in it at the beginning of their career, I believe they're entering it to heal their own wounds. Hmm. Yeah. You know, you don't kind of end up in this career as a mistake. Right. I'm, you know, I'm gonna go help someone else who's severely depressed and feels, you know, hopeless in their life and craft a plan. Um, but it's just kept evolving. I mean, I, I was doing interventions for $29 uh, or thirty. I, I take the back. I stayed at twenty nine dollar motel rooms doing interventions for five hundred dollars. Uh, you know, helping people change, hmm. and uh, been doing it over twenty years. Is is there a method or technique that you have that you think sort of stands out that gets people in a, mm, in a better I place? Think, well, quicker? I think the first step is chemistry. Hmm. If I'm working with someone one on one, um, right. if you don't have chemistry. It can't work if someone doesn't feel safe. So I may represent something to someone else. And I'm, I've always approached it like I may not be the right guy. So right. let's see if I am. Um, hmm. But usually I add some humor, especially when someone's in a dark spot in their life. Yeah. Um, and really try to tackle what is the first thing we need to address? Like right. what is the problem? Right. Because life has infinite problems. Mm -hmm. And usually when we think something's a problem, it isn't it. It's something else. And right. so that's where I come in and I help someone figure out the solution. Now, how many years have you been at it? Doing uh, over 20. As a counselor, advisor. As a, uh, yeah, yeah, as a consultant, as a life, as, over as, 20 as years. A, as an LC. Over yeah. 20 years. I created a treatment center 17 years ago mm. in my apartment running free groups. Oh, wow. Yeah, I didn't wow. know how else. I mean, I couldn't have people pay. I didn't know yeah. what I was doing. Yeah. You know, and then uh, it just kept evolving and evolving. And mm -hmm. we just celebrated our 17th year in West Hollywood. Wow, man. Yeah. And you've written two books. I have. Yeah. And what, what are the two books and what are they so, basically So, yeah, about? the first book is called Best Self. Mm -hmm. uh, Best Self, Be You Only Better. And in that book, I help someone creatively figure out who their best self is. Mm -hmm. um, the book was a wild success. And this is from someone who struggled in school. Right. Well, I don't, I actually don't like writing. Hmm. I find it isolating. Yeah. You know, yeah. and when you feel it, you can write when you don't feel it, especially yeah. when you're on it, when you got a deadline. That's been my thing. Yeah. We need this by tomorrow. Oh God. How many books have you written? Three. Mm. Three. Yeah. And the last one was autobiographical okay. personal development con combo. And it's funny that when you're talking about having these groups in your apartment, I think, I, I went through a lot of growth periods, a lot of phases like that, and I had a lot of struggles. Yeah. You know, I was, didn't graduate from college, and I struggled in school, too. I had a speech issue, uh, which was part of my problem. So early on, when I came out to California, which is the perfect place, I would meet in, in this psychologist's apartment yeah. with other people. We'd get in a circle, we learn this technique, and then we would go off on our own. Um, and it was, it was it had so much valuable for, value for me. You know? Yeah, so, it's so fun, too. Yeah. When you realize you can start to heal parts of yourself and help others, it's exciting. Yeah, really cool, man. Yeah. Any other exciting projects, anything that you're working on right now that, because uh, um, I, I mean, before, you know, I can probably mention this, but before we were talking, like you were going through some, some changes in your life as well. And so yeah, you are know, those changes, they involve new projects or just other stuff? I mean, I've had big epiphanies, oh, big in the last few months. Really? You know, when you have those life changing epiphanies. Yeah, and, and um, you're how old? 43. I had him about that time. Really? Yeah, I did. Oh, I'm on track. Between 40, 43 and 45. Yeah. They're big for me. Yeah, the big thing lately in my life is love. Hmm. And uh, I came to realize that, so my dad, the way he would show love, would show up at my sporting events or 
games or me mm. achieving or me being on the Dr. Phil show, he'd be able to talk to his friends. So it was very right. performative. Right. 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 And then my mom, it was just, uh, just my mom. So I, I don't want to go too deep into it, but basically I realized mm. that I became more successful than I thought I would be. And part of that is I thought I would be loved. Like I, I th- yeah, not at a real conscious level. Like the more successful you are, the more loved you'll be. The more, yeah. The more I'm going to love myself somehow. Like, oh, I'm going to be proud of myself. You know, people will probably say to you, aren't you so proud? And it doesn't really resonate sometimes. Yeah, because it just feels like work. Mostly. It just feels like work. And, yeah. and I come to realize that success doesn't equal self-love. And I know, like, it's, yeah. everyone says, duh. But I profoundly understand that now. Wow. And more important for me is connection with others. Mm. Connecting with people in the world, these random characters that we get to interfere with, like when we go to the gas station and we buy a water or the people who work here on your show, it's Mm -hmm. like, it's more being in the moment instead of like, what can I get and what's in it for me or, and allowing the universe to play it out. And so, um, that's just personally what I've been really jazzed but, but, on. But I'm assuming that there's probably a lot of that with the with the folks that you work with. Oh yeah. You know what I mean? And I, mean, I and I get to integrate it. So right. Because I've done this over 20 years, just like you've been in fitness a very long time. We have to figure out different ways to get excited. Right. And usually the ways of getting excited are also what am I doing to shift my own reality or my own life. And then we create inspiration and then we get really excited. Right. So right. um I, you know, like I wrote two New York Times bestsellers. I don't need a third. <laughs> like, and I, I and I don't need a fourth. Yeah. Even though I, I've sketched one out. Oh no, I've and sketched I, I, two. I, 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 oh, that's a good. That's a good title for a chapter. That's not a good title for a chapter. I can. So yeah, yeah, it's scattered. But it's like for what? Post-it notes. Like, mm-hmm. so what's the real goal? Like, if my intention of writing the book is okay, I know this method can help. If my intention is more about other people, then I could probably get into it. But right now, I would be like. I'm not as excited about it. I've done it. And I, for me, I get go through periods of my career where I feel like I kind of master something and mm-hmm. then I want to move on. Right, right. And two New York Times bestsellers is mastering it. I think so, yeah. It's doing pretty well. Yeah. And yeah, that's pretty boss. And, 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 and I, um, you know, working on a TV show concept that hopefully I can land. It's interesting. Mm-hmm. I've worked with so many entertainers, but then you try to make it on your own and you just realize... Um, but I, so I'm a recovering addict hmm. and, uh, what I found, how many years you've been sober? Uh, so I have not drank or done illegal substances and coming up on 21 years. Oh, wow. Yeah. Congrats on that. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah. I had one moment with a doctor who prescribed me something where I went through a little bit of abusing it, um, which was a bit of a mind, mm. uh, you know, having a treatment center and, <laughs> Right. Like the shame right. that was associated with it. But recently I've just come in to terms of being honest and open. You know? I think that's, yeah. And if anybody knows that's the best tactic, it's you. Yeah. 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 Secrets keep yeah. us sick. Yeah. Because I mean, a lot of people that are doing an interview like this probably wouldn't bring that up. Bring up what? The fact that you had a little issue there for a bit. Yeah. I don't care. That, uh, again, yeah. it's like. But, that, but the, everybody who's walking, they goes, damn. Like, you know, he's confident enough that he can have gone through that and be honest about it. That feels like me. Well, be, yeah. also because my career is not the number one thing anymore. Right, right. Or like what people think of me. Yeah. You know, yeah. I want to be loved, man. Yeah. That's what I want. Like sincere in my life, love others, be loved, have connections. Yeah. Um, and help people and have an amazing time, you know, yeah, doing that. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, yeah. That's awesome, dude. Really good. You work with a lot of charities. Apparently. Some. Yeah, I mean, I, I work with one called Go Campaign. Okay. And I just uh, I just helped out World Central Kitchen because they're they're in Ukraine going on over there, trying mm. what they can do. Uh, tell me a little about about the charities you work you work with. Well, for a while, I was trying to open up uh, mental health clinics in Kurdistan, helping. Oh, dang. Yeah, so I was going there alone. It was mm. a really big uh, venture to chew off, you know, okay. like to really get behind and do it. Yeah. Wow. Um, so I was hoping to get a lot of the my clients to sell their merch you know, to fund these mental health clinics. Right. Um, so that kind of was like a real passion project. I was getting behind. And then also I was bringing self-help on music tours. So before the concerts, uh, we would bring out different people who give free self-help seminars. No one was allowed their cell phone. Mm. So it could be very private and intimate. And um, That's a cool idea. Yeah, thanks. Yeah. Yeah, yeah oh, it, wow. was, uh, it was pretty powerful. 
Hmm. What do you do now for charity that's really fulfilling for you? Well, you know, for me, uh, my buddy Scott Pfeiffer, uh, he was an attorney and a, and a screenwriter. He used to write all the jokes for the Emmys and the Oscars. You know, like when you see actors read that. And he went off on a working vacation to Tanzania and he met these orphans. And he, he saw this, you know, this guy who was running this, this organization. He just went, this guy, you know, he's trying to help these kids. He just doesn't have the skills. I do. So he changed his career on a dime mm. and started a single. A go campaign, and he's helped 185,000 orphans around the world thus far. Wow. And so he's a friend of mine. I see him. He works out with me. You know, he went on a run Saturday, um, and uh, you know, so I just I know, and all the money go. The guy lives in squalor. He's got a crappy little car and a tiny little apartment. And he can give himself a bigger salary, but he doesn't. Yeah. And all the money go. And also, World Central Kitchen. I'm just a, a big fan of what they do. And um, and then uh, Doctors Without Borders is another one that I give mm. to. But. Yeah, and here's what I've noticed, man. I bet you feel the same way about this. You know, what goes around comes around. Kind yeah, of thing. You know I, mean? I started doing this thing recently where <laughs> this is so gross, but I walk my dog and there's been times that I've forgotten her poop bag. Anyone with the dog knows sometimes you, and then you think to yourself, I'm gonna go back and pick up the poop. Right, right. And you don't, mm. right? Because it's three blocks away and you don't really wanna go back and pick up the poop. And so every time I walk my dog now, <laughs> I literally pick up her poop and someone else's poop. Whoa! As like a, that's 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 bigger than you think, man. Well, that's, I have I have three dogs. I know about the poop. poop you know right? about the yeah. poop, right? And I and I have where I live. Uh, there's a 17 miles of walking trails. Oh wow! So everybody with a dog is up and down my street. And I even I even bought an extra garbage can, and I cut a little slot for it at the end of my property because it used to be all over the place. Oh, we're, we're getting into dog poop here. Is that, this is a <laughs> probably we're veering. Way off. No, it's just acts yeah. of kindness. Yeah, yeah right? Yeah. yeah. Hello, power people. It is I, Tony Horton. You might know me from some of my past workout programs and my sports supplement brand, Power Life. Now, I've trained some of the biggest stars on the planet, from rock stars to action heroes. But between now and when I'm in my hundreds, I want to live large, I want to take charge, I want to feel good. And you can do it too. Oh, but Tony, I've never exercised a day in my life. Look at yourself in the mirror, and if it's not going the way you want to go, I'm here to help you do it, because I can. Anybody can do it. And if you're willing to take charge and feel good about your life, I don't care if you're 40 or 50 or 60 or 70, it can be done. All you got to do is train, and you've got to consume the right things to fuel your body so you have the energy and enthusiasm to show up day after day day after day. Trust me, it can happen. Do you really want me to flex? Let me change channels here. Yes. Let's switch gears. Jiu-jitsu. Yes. Like what you put me through was like, I know we were kind of going through the motions, but I felt helpless, man. Yeah. Like, you would just zip, zip, boom, and I was on my back. And I, you know, I yeah. was tapping out in the New York second. Like, at, at 40, what, how old were you when you started? 40. 40. Mm. Like, why jujitsu and why 40? Well, I had always loved the art, martial arts. Mm. Um, and I would go to these gyms once a year. And it's, it's just like trainers. You go, you go one time your experience isn't amazing. And you're right. like, yeah. okay, that was interesting, but I'm not gonna go back. And I was in Brazil um, during COVID mm. and I uh, went to kind of this epicenter called Alliance in Sao Paulo. And I did a course there and I loved it. Mm. And they recommended this guy named Cobrinha, who they said was the Michael Jordan of Jiu Jitsu in LA. Oh, dang. So I ended up going to his school, which I still go to, and I just, I fell in love with it. And part of the love is um, it pushes my ego aside. It's one of the few things you can't think about anything else because you're just trying to survive in the moment. Right, right. Whereas when I would work out at the gym, I was thinking about 10 other things. Right, right. Um, even like, what song am I gonna play next, right? We're in jiu-jitsu, right, you're right. trying to survive. Right. And then and I started you're trying to learn. Yeah. I mean, then, it's a physical, mental and emotional thing all happening at the same time. And then when yeah. I started competing, that was a whole other mental task. Mm -hmm. Like the one, one tournament, I was crying before I went out to fight. Wow. My emotions were just so out of whack. I didn't grow up well, fighting. Because you thought someone was going to kick your ass? No, no. I just it brings out all of your primal stuff, your issues, but it heightens it. So I was going through a breakup and all of a sudden 
you know, I'm, I'm trying to think of the song I'm going to listen to before I go fight the stranger, and it's a fight. Right. And I turn on the song I normally listen to, and that reminds me of my ex, and I just start crying. I'm like, my professor's there. He's like, what's going on? <laughs> that's, but boy, man, isn't that what life's about, though? Yeah. You know? Yeah. Yeah, that's... So it's, it's been incredible, though. Mm. Yoga did that for me. I, yeah. I would go through a breakup, and I'd go to yoga class. You know what I mean? I have to put a towel over my head, you know, whatever, when you're sitting up after Shavasana. Because I was just <laughs> convulsing with tears, you know what I mean? Yeah. And certain things, physical things can do that. Yeah. I think that's the reason why a lot of people don't, well, a lot of reasons why they don't want to be physical, whatever their reason is. But they don't want, it, it forces you to deal with emotional stuff sometimes. Yeah, and it's the same so, thing. It depends yeah. who your teacher is. Yeah, yeah. It really is important who yeah. your coach or teacher is. Totally, yeah. yeah. Game changer. Totally. Yeah. Like when I do yin yoga and they talk too softly and I can't hear a thing, I'm like, I want to yell out, speak up. What's going on? What do you want me to do? You know, it's like I get out of that serenity. I'm like, you know, because I'll try to like go lower than the music yes. with the vibe. Right, right, right. I'm like, tell me what to do, you know. And then so. your head's on a swivel trying to, like, what is that the thing? <laughs> yeah. um, oh, okay. I'm, I'm doing a Baru Kunasana now. Great. Nice. Thank yeah. you for your help. Tell us a little bit about, you know, if you don't mind, getting mm. into your kind of the, your personal journey and how you chose to become someone who wants to help other people. Yeah, so I started using drugs at 15, mm. 14 probably. What, I, was your, what was your drug of choice back then? Depended on the year. So it kind of just- <laughs> Depended on, oh, the, uh, on the hour. <laughs> yeah, yes. I was a garbage can. Yeah. <laughs> really? No kidding. Yeah, yeah. 15 years old. 15, 16, and I played mm. basketball. I went to this high school called Modern Day. I was captain of the basketball team. Mm. Went with the homecoming queen. Um, at the time, when I grew up in Orange County, I did never heard of anyone being gay. Mm -hmm. So I didn't even know it existed. And no, started, no kidding. Yeah, I didn't even or, know. Orange County, what, the 90s? Or the, yeah, I never saw anything on TV. I right. didn't like- and When did you have those feelings? How soon? Well, probably around like 13, you know, when you start going through puberty. Right, right. And then I thought all guys go through this. Like, I, I literally thought this was like the phase of- And where do you go to get the intel for that, right? And at the time, the internet was just coming out. Right, right. So there was no information. There was nothing on TV. And the reason I bring it up is when you feel like there's something wrong with you and you don't know anyone else who has it, uh, you start to develop feelings of shame mm -hmm. and something wrong with me. Mm -hmm. And then you overcompensate. You go with the homecoming queen. You, you right. become the star basketball player. Right. Right. And so I, at the end, I was using meth. I mean, that was like my drug of choice at 22. I went to play basketball at Fordham, which is in the Bronx in New York. Sure. Um, and then- Who were I, you, a power forward? Yeah, power forward. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, yeah. I was more mouthy. You know, like some people had, I, I was athletic, but I, it wasn't like I was dunking on people. Right. So I had to use a little bit of like talking. Were you this size then or were you nah, trimmer? I was probably, I was about 40 pounds less, I'd right. say, 40, 50 pounds. And then when I, at the end of meth, I was about 75, 80 pounds less than I am now. Dang. Yeah, I was yeah. using heavy. Like so you were kind of a, a Draymond week. Green of your time at Fordham then? Mouthy, I figure. You're yeah, right. yeah, yeah, mouthy. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> right. But I mean, the, the thing is that then I checked myself in the treatment at 22, mm -hmm. uh, and then I became a counselor, and then I started doing interventions. And so it really it's turning pain into purpose and mm. turning, you know, suffering into inspiration yeah. and darkness into light, right? Like yes. that's how we yeah. redefine our purpose. So that's kind of how I got into it. In the space of life coaching, I think where I kind of got a little like, eh, was just these coaches that are like trying to get people to sign up for these enormous packages. Right. And they're having to take out mortgages on their houses. Right. And like, I don't Love buy that. into any of that. Yeah, like I'm, for me, even when people call our center and we take insurance, we never tell someone to spend money they don't have. Like that baffles me as like a value. Right. It's like, right. there's so many options in the world. Right. So if you're a coach, and somebody needs to take out a mortgage or take out more money, a credit line, and that's all the money they have, and you're gonna have one group a week with like some online curriculum, what suspect. You, suspect. Suspect. Mm -mm. Uh -uh. You know, it's interesting too that you you had to go through that little bit of hell. You had to yeah. kind of discover who you really were. Yeah. And then what, what blossomed from that is this guy that's helped thousands of people. A lot, yeah. You know, and me too. I had to get over that speech thing and the fact that I was a 98 pound weakling 
and I was overcompensating with whatever recreational garbage I was doing. Yeah, yeah. You know, and just being lazy. I mean, I was I had lazy down. I had procrastination down. You know, what I mean, I was just just kind of skirting for 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 a while there. You yeah. Know what I mean, um, and just I was having fun. I'm out in Cali. You know, I mean, look at this place, right? Yeah, it's amazing. Seventy two and sunny most days, um, but then eventually, you know, I, I was watching friends of mine you know get real jobs make real money yeah. buy homes have kids get married and i'm you know i'm still in my two-bedroom apartment going wait a minute right so it's just for me you know that personal development made a big difference for me and, oh yeah and so i mean i feel knock on wood wherever it is i feel blessed to be where i am you know yeah, i bet you too. do too you know? oh yeah very sure. yeah so yeah you got to go through hell before you get to heaven i guess here's a good question mm. for, that i think is how do you how do you handle all the different balls in the air, right? You got your own life. And the fact that you're probably doing jujitsu, you're doing it later today, yeah. right? That's your personal time. Yeah. Do you find that there's a lot of conflict where there's things that you'd like to do in your life and you, you, and you, you, know, you feel like you're, there's too many other balls in the air and you can't really get to everything? Or have you figured that out? Because that's, that's where I've screwed I feel up a free. lot. You show me. I, feel, I mean, I'm being show honest. Show me I the feel, friggin' I way. Feel, I feel free. Yeah. I, I don't feel... Um, Overwhelmed. The only time it's overwhelming is when something, for me, like. Um, were there times when, though, as you were starting to build your career? Yeah, of course. Whenever we think we're not good at something, or when we're not good at something, or when we have to learn something, or we're pushing our. I just I used to create all these different businesses. I had like a web company for a while, mm. three silver living homes. You know, I've written books, public speaking, like all these different things. So the exciting thing is whenever something new gets on our plate, we get to learn. Right. Right. And when we get curious, there's so much information on the internet, we can learn how to get better. Um, but in terms of uh, personal time, I probably played too much Magic the Gathering. It's like this nerdy card game. Oh, is that right? <laughs> yeah. Is that right? I, I probably played Magic too much. Magic the Gathering. <laughs> it's a distraction. Yeah, no, you're basically a wizard and you cast spells. It's like a video game. I would say that if anything in my life where I'm like, okay, what's a vice? It's like this game where I'm probably playing a 12-year-old in another country. <laughs> right, right. Yeah. That sounds kind of fun. Cool. Yeah, but I have a coach that I work with. Mm. Um, I meditate every morning. I is it breath work or meditation? Do you get a little deep? Like, no, so I mix curious. it up. Sometimes I'll listen to a song. Like I could mm. listen to a Tom Petty song and literally meditate to it and mm. like be feel like I'm floating in inspiration afterwards. Or free falling. Yeah, yeah. I'm not. Uh, you know, we go through different phases. Sometimes right. it's right. like think about nothing. <laughs> yeah. But I think for yeah. everyone, you have to figure out your own unique what works for you as a person. Yeah. Um, you know, I'll do a ritual. Even I did a ritual in the bathroom here before I came on your podcast where I like mm. drop on my knees, pop back up, look at myself in the eyes and say, be yourself. Mm. Like, you know, we all have these different little habits sure, that yeah, we- that, that get us and get us in the moment. Yeah. Like on, on the Gi, they both said, be present. Yeah. The first time I ever heard be present or be in the moment. I'm like, what the hell are they talking about? I used to take acting classes, right? I was, yeah. I did stand up for a while and I did improv comedy, but this acting coach, Daryl Hickman, his, the acting thing was you have to be in the moment. Like so many people mm. are thinking about what they're angry or sad or depressed or what the lines are. And we had to learn how to wash all that away and just listen, you know, regardless of what was coming from the other actor. Mm. Like, what do you, what do you, how do you respond to that? And that be, mo be in the moment, be present thing you know, transcended into other aspects of my, of my life as well. Yeah. You know I mean? Yeah. It's, yeah. it's interesting, even dialogue, right? So we meet for the first time. It's kind of like dogs that sniff each other yeah, a little yeah, bit. Totally. Like, is this dude going to be cool? Yeah. Is he not going to be cool? Right. And then it's like, does he like me? Does he not? Like, you know, like we all have these things that go on, go off in our brains. Yep. And if we can yep. just get to connecting yeah. and quiet that noise, yeah. you know, yeah. life feels a lot better. Yeah. And I think a lot of it stems from the, what you said earlier is like, uh, caring about what other people think of you. Yeah. Like the, the I mean, I, of course I care. It's not like I don't care, but I don't care as much yeah. as I used to. Because before it was, it was the end all be all about wanting to make sure that everybody around me just thought I was the cat's meow. Yeah. You know what I mean? And, and you can't, you know, you can't be everybody's best pal. And so I, you know, I just try to be a, a fairly kind and patient and thoughtful person. Mm -hmm. Sometimes I'm a dick. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. Uh, whatever, based on whatever else is going on in my life. But yeah, it's that. If, if I could just be that guy, then, you know, I'll, I'll just take what I get and be okay with it without. <sighs> yeah. You know, it's so, you're right, it's that, that, like, quiet desperation almost. Right, or, right. It's interesting right. because with social media, we're kind of made to believe that 
the more we get engagement, the more successful we'll be. And the biggest moments I've had in my career mm. have literally not come from anything online. Yep. Anything trying to be yep. liked. Yep. It's all just come from like the universe and me yep. going, okay. Yeah. Yep. Like I, you know, I started going on Dr. Phil four years ago and I, I did I don't know, probably like 40 episodes. Mm. But I literally, how that happened was I brought him and another manager together who was a client of mine and I thought they would do business together. Mm. And then all of a sudden he asked me to go on the show. And then he told me I needed to write a book. And then he flew me to meet my agent. You know, like I didn't like, if I would have tried to get a book and tried to get an agent. <laughs> if you tried to make all that happen, yeah, it never happened. There's no way. It just happened organically. Yeah. yeah. I'm sure for you too, right? Um, no, I got on my knees and just begged. <laughs> I begged everyone, please. I live in a van <laughs> down by the river. I need you to help me. For me, uh, I just opened doors that I used to leave closed. Mm. Uh, and I'd, I mean, I have 23 failed businesses, mouth guards, watches, insoles, five home delivery food services, six pilots all <laughs> crashed and burned. You know, whatever, you just keep going. And now it's just blowing up. I mean, people are, I mean, look, we came up with very unique formulas, things that do not exist out in the world. You can't get it in a regular store. You know, when we look at our protein powder, the, the HMB and the vitamin D3 and that combination and how much has to be in there for it to work. Mm. And, and we're getting, you know, we're getting all this amazing feedback. And they, and I, and I, it was developed initially for me because I got, you know, I probably sound like a broken record of folks, but I got really sick in 2017, like 25 pounds and couldn't move and threw up a lot. And, it was, you know, was, and I still have little bits of that. I'll have it. I have nerve damage for the rest of my life that will be in there. Uh, would, you know, did I know that was going to work? Nah, a lot of them didn't work, but, you know, right people, right time, you know, you know, being open to yeah, their suggestions. Yeah, it's also taking a struggle and turning it into something. Something, yeah. Right? Yeah, yeah. I still want my own damn show, though. We'll see. Do you? Oh, wait a minute. I've got one. It's called Power Up. <laughs> and I'm right here with Coach Mike. Let me read this one. This is this is from a fan of yours, apparently. So you got, yeah. Oh, really? It's cool. Let's see what, what uh, he or she says. Other than your proximity to the entertainment industry, how do you, how do you become known for being a life coach to celebrities. You know? Well, I did interventions for a bunch of years, so I remember I can say some of these people because they've even had me on their podcast. Right. So I had like some of the MTV shows like where they, the parents would call me about the daughters and I'd have to intervene. And then I, I remember I worked with the Osbournes and I interviewed on Kelly um, and she just kept calling me a sucker like 50 times. <laughs> I'm like wearing my dad's suit because I couldn't <laughs> afford my own suit. I have like my notebook, like my leather That's rock notebook. and roll, baby, right there. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Uh -huh. But then like I started, uh, it just slowly starts happening where people mm. be like, oh, call Mike, call Mike. So it's just crises and then right. bands breaking up or someone won't go on stage. Wow. And then um, I think that it helps that I'm a big dude and gay for female pop stars. Right. <laughs> I'm being honest, like yeah. I had somehow like yeah. filled this like. Your sense of humor helps too. I think that's, that's too. a nice combo for you to be. Yeah, like, maybe it's not. The, yeah, I, 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 well, thank you. Well, <laughs> I, um, but then it just kept like growing and then it was like public breakups and hmm. it just kind of grows. Call Mike. It's weird. I never um, was like, I want to work in entertainment. I think if you just do really good at anything, uh, and you live in this and town. you live in this town, you're gonna get, yeah. you know, it's the yeah. same thing if you're a dermatologist or. A, sure. I just, I was really good at handling crises. Right. And loved right. it. Yeah, I mean, same thing with me. I, I was really overweight. I wanted, to be a, I wanted to be an actor. Oh. You know what I mean? But I've taken acting classes and I'm doing the thing and all the yeah. thing, whatever. And then, um, and then I had to make money so I could eat and yeah. pay for my rent. And I, one of my 15 jobs was working over at, at Fox and training that producer. And then he, you know, he said he lost that 40 pounds, 35 pounds. And then he just told Tom Petty without me knowing. And Tom called me up and said, hey, Tom Petty, my roommate hung up on him. Mm. And then whatever, then it was Tom, then it was Billy Idol, then it was Stephen Stills and Annie Lennox yeah. and the da 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 right? So, um, and I think it was that your, your methods, like people would have dumped your ass in a New York second if you're, if you weren't who you were, A, mm -hmm. and your techniques didn't, didn't get and, results. And I can tell you the first intervention I ever did was in the Hollywood Hills. I remember my mom, I had to go to Kinko's to print out like there was a protocol for this company and I was intervening on like the brother of some big director. I was so insecure and uncomfortable that they got their money back. And I would say my first 10 interventions I did, I was terrible. Wow. It's so, you gave them their money back. because you I felt had, The company I worked for did. 
Oh, jeez. Yeah, like I, they, I, I opened their LA office, but it was living with my mom in Orange County. And I just, I had no experience. That's how what old, I'm saying. How old were you then? What were you like? 24, 25. Wow, man. And I just remember everyone staring at me. Like, I remember the sister just looking right through me, knowing that I wasn't very good. <laughs> <laughs> it's just so uncomfortable. That's, that's, that's cool though, though, man. You just, like experiences like that, most stifle most folks are done. You know? Yeah, no one comes out of the gate. Right, Great. right. Mm -mm. I mean, went with uh, the only reason why I did pretty well with this, this movie producer, because I was in the gym every day and I was stealing from everybody. I was a member of four gyms. One of them was World Gym. There's Arnold Schwarzenegger and Lou Ferrigno and all the top bodybuilders in the country. I, I, I love this because I get to learn about some people who are doing some really cool things. You too. Yeah, thanks. Yeah. I appreciate that. Uh, for our audience uh, who want now they're intrigued, they're mesmerized. They're in, they're Come they're committed over. to uh, Coach Mike. How far <laughs> do folk, folks find it's you? It's just Coach Mike Bear on all social media. Coach yeah, Mike Coach Bear. Mike Bear. Boom. Coach Mike Bear dot com and Coach Mike Bear on all socials. So. Can I? Is it uh, Coach Bear dot org? No org. Uh, no org. No dot no dot org is going oh, on. No. Okay, that's yeah. it. Well, hey man. Hey man, thank you Pleasure. for having me. Absolutely, brother. All right. Well, thank you so much for watching this episode of Power Up with Me. Tony yeah. Horton. I am Tony Horton. And don't forget to like and share and subscribe. And if you want to see more amazing episodes with amazing guests like Coach Mike right here, click right over there. All right, everybody, that's it. See ya. Women's living rooms, and it was my demographic. It was like the perfect comedy club, if you think about it. Mm. And I was supposed to be talking about jewelry, and instead I talked about breastfeeding and hemorrhoids and how I resented my husband because he didn't hear the baby crying in the night.